Hey everyone, this is the Monday Tuesday recap of the teaching message on Sunday, the short version of it. We jumped into Colossians chapter 2 again. We've been doing a book series and then also some topics uh, scattered throughout this summer. Uh, so there's a few things. We went into chapter 2. We were going to go through verse 8 to 15. and said we focused mainly on verse 8, 9, 10, and 11, and actually mostly verses 8 and 9. And so the big thing in this passage is Paul gives them this first really hard command about don't let yourself be deceived, or the language literally means be taken captive, enslavement, uh, by philosophies that are being offered. And he begins to hint more at what is going on in the church in Colossae that he's writing to. And he's using the term philosophy sort of generically, not super specific in terms of like, well, we might use it in the study of philosophy, or if you went and got a degree in philosophy, he's using more generically their sort of their way of thinking. And so he says this, don't, don't go back into captivity, that in Christ they experienced a freedom, both intellectually and in their very being with their body, that they were now living into. But there's this temptation to say, well, Jesus isn't enough. I need something else. I need more uh, in terms of the spiritual life in terms of a way of living. And he's saying, no, the philosophy of Christ ultimately is all that you need and leaning into that more and unpacking that. So there's things we do, works that we do to grow in our relationship with God through Jesus and our knowledge of Jesus and our experience of Jesus uh, that are grace empowered, good things to do. He's not talking about that or those types of works, if you will. He's talking about adding other things too, that it's Christ plus um, this belief system or that structure. And he's saying, actually, in terms of your own spiritual life and your, in your experiencing freedom within and your deepest core, Jesus is the only thing that we need to focus on in that case. So he says, don't be taken captive again, whether it's through religiosity, whether it's through turning science into religion, don't be captive by these things if we were to apply it in our day. Um, he also introduces the idea of powers, and we will get more to that this Sunday, both circumcision, baptism, and the idea of spiritual forces and powers at work in our world, the stoichia is the word that's used there. And he said, so he begins to introduce what's the solution then? What do you do when you're feeling like, um, I need Jesus plus, or I, I, there's these other things that are appealing to me, uh, and, yet, I, and yet how do I put that together with Christ's exclusive claim on me? He goes back and reminds him in verse 9 that in Christ, the fullness of the deity was pleased to dwell in bodily form. This is a massive verse. This verse right here is one we camped out on and talked a lot about on Sunday. I gave you uh, Scott McKnight's four connections about, the, about to what this fullness verse is all about. Full of the deity. Uh, there's a reference throughout scripture, the idea of fullness as a revelation of God's glory. And so that in Jesus, God's glory is fully revealed. The glory of God is Jesus, his life, his teachings, his death on the cross, which is so countercultural in every culture, the idea of God dying, the idea of God absorbing violence instead of meeting out that judgment himself. This is the glory of God on display. The word all, all is used here, that there is nothing left over, that all that is God is revealed in Jesus. Jesus is God's selfie, the clearest picture of God. McKnight gives us a third one. It says all of God's fullness is found in Christ, the emphasis on fullness. And we pulled in uh, the attributes of God to talk about this fullness. And uh, Walter Brueggemann has a wonderful quote about in, in the Old Testament, when we talk about God's attributes, it's not so much about all-powerful, all-controlling, all-knowing. It's more about justice, mercy, and faith, sustaining a relationship, building just relationships, revealed as God's grace at work within us, from God's grace at work within us. Um, yeah, and so that this fullness of who God is is revealed in Jesus. And so we have to come back again to Jesus, keep him at the center, especially when we're tempted to put something else at the center. We've already been, it's already been revealed throughout history and time that those other things, if they're put in that ultimate place in our way of thinking and processing our reality, they will always leave us disappointed. They will always demand more and leave us uh, empty. And Jesus is just the opposite of that. And then the fourth, the indwelling of Christ, that God comes in a body, that God enters fully into the creation, that the line between the two universes is brought together in Christ, that it's made manifest fully, that we can experience Jesus. And because Jesus put on a body, we also can know him in a very personal way, that he has lived a human life, uh, and that he is now living in 
what we might call the uh, resurrected body or the new body that will come for all of us one day when creation takes its next huge leap forward that is promised in scripture that one day that will happen uh, to use sort of modern language to talk about an ancient spiritual truth. So we talked about that, uh, verse 9, and don't fall again, Jesus is the fullness. And um, so the really challenge is, is giving our allegiance to Christ and sustaining our allegiance to Christ, even when there's things that are pulling us and trying to claim that core center. We're told that indeed all the fullness is in Christ. We need to keep getting ourselves recentered in Christ, and that in turn will give us new life and new hope and move us forward as humans in community. So what false ideologies do you think are calling out to you? What false things are claiming sort of this ultimacy that doesn't line up with God who's revealed as self-sacrificial love? What are these things that ultimately when you compare them to Jesus, they actually just don't even have a leg to stand on? Uh, compare the things. Look at them. Look at Jesus' life. Look at his teachings. Look at uh, those that have leaned into that. Uh, and remember, there's those that have claimed his name but not actually done uh, the work of following him in relationship. There's a difference. You always have pretenders and those that are leaning into that and those that own their own hypocrisy and admit it freely and I'm leaning into Jesus looking for life change and I'm beginning to see it here, there, and elsewhere and I cast myself on his grace. So what are those ideologies? What are those philosophies that are calling to you uh, that when compared honestly against Jesus' life and teachings, death and resurrection, um, just simply won't hold a candle, as the old-timers would say, to it. So, uh, yeah, Sunday we began to dig into that. We're going to pick up with the idea of circumcision and baptism. Yay, fun topics. And then also the powers, this idea of spiritual forces and political and other powers uh, that are being uh, revealed in Christ and are being displayed for their fraudulent activities as well in Christ. Christ reaches forward into time right up to our day and beyond us as well. Okay, if you have questions or if you want to talk more about that, I'm totally open for coffee or give me a call or an email or text. Love to chat with you. I hope you have a great week as we start it here on Tuesday. God bless.